Hey, this is Chill from Ghosty Gamers. Uh, just kidding. Uh, I should probably cut that photo. Uh, this is Chill from Team Liquid. Um, this is the second commentary in this series. Uh, Zerg vs. Terran again on Longinus. Um, this is going to be the only other game in this series. Um, the other ones, uh, I, I looked through them, there's not much to say about them. There, there's some good points, but not enough to make a full commentary. And uh, there there are some other good games in that uh, replay pack, but uh, for whatever reason, either Camtasia crashed or I didn't hit the record button, or uh, for some reason I ended up with just a two-second video file like the entire game didn't record. So, um, I don't know what's going on. Some of it's obviously my fault. Some of it, uh, I might have to tweak some settings or something. Uh, but hopefully I'll get that figured out. It's unfortunate because there was a, there were a few games where I'd finish playing it and then be like, oh, wow, that, like, I, I have a few things to say about that. And then, you know, I, I'd, I'd go back and alt tab and the thing wouldn't even be running. So, um, that's unfortunate, but, uh, hopefully I can just keep playing, get, get a few more games out here. Um, and, and get more commentaries going on that uh, without kind of diluting the quality by just pumping them out. So, um, just a disclaimer here, this this isn't the greatest of games, this is actually a really bad game, uh, bad play by both players. Um, as I said before in the first commentary, this is going to be more focused on, after you've made a mistake, how to change your build, how to adapt your style, and and how you can still win uh, with a bit of luck if you just if you make the right changes, um, yeah, and you get a little lucky. So uh, everything I said on Blue Storm about being a two-player map with a quick rush distance, well, Longinus is the complete opposite. It's a three-player map with uh, a very long rush distance. So oftentimes there won't be even be an SCV out of Terran's base by the time you go to put down your hatchery just because um, it's not worth the cut in economy to Terran to send that scout fast enough because it's not going to be doing anything. Um, so, so uh, yeah, you can often just hatch uh, with no problems. And I send out the 12 scout just to scout for uh, cheeses and um, to, to basically see if he's fast expanded. So what I'm looking for is um, how many barracks does he have? How many marines does he have? Does he have gas? Does it look like he's saving minerals? And from that information, I'm going to figure out if he's fast expanding or if he's playing kind of a a, a two racks kind of build or some sort of tech build. Unfortunately, he, uh, I scouted wrong, so I, by the time I get into his base, it's uh, he's already got a marine up, and I can't really see anything. But but uh, you'll see, you can infer some something still from uh, just what the overload sees. So normally I put this third hatchery in, in the first choke on Longinus, so there's two chokes, one to the natural and one to the main. I put it in the main choke, um, which is kind of the vertical one there, uh, to block marine renbys. For whatever reason I didn't do it, that came just kind of absent-mindedness. And uh, you'll see what happens and why it might be a good idea uh, to do that uh, in the future. So I don't know if you could see quickly when I went over to the Overlord. I'm sure I'll go back at some point because I remember seeing it a lot of times. My Overlord is seeing that Marines are coming two at a time. And so from that I can figure out he's got, uh, he's going to two gates. So he's going to do some sort of early academy push. And then afterwards he'll have, uh, he'll fast, he'll expand. So not really fast expansion, just a, a kind of an old school normal expansion kind of. Um, and this actually caught me a little off guard, uh, just because the push comes out obviously a lot faster than um, if if it was just a normal fast expansion build. So what I should have done to react was just made more sunken because I'm ahead anyway because his exp his uh, expansion is slower. What I tried to do, um, I'm kind of spoiling the game here, but whatever. What I tried to do was just my standard uh, Zergling backstab, and and because he was out so quickly, it, it didn't really uh, work out as it normally would have if he just did uh, a fast expansion with uh, moving out afterwards. So you can see he's already getting ready to move out. He's pro by by uh, posturing his Marines forward like that, you can tell he's just waiting for medics in the next next two things coming out will be medics and then I'll probably move out. So I've just got uh, a few speedlings grouped up here. Uh, I'm waiting for Zergen speed. And just, uh, yeah, as I said, I should have either used those to flank and trap him in against the Sunkins or just use them to defend. 
Um, and then I would have made a, a much better choke here if I uh, had put the, the hatchery in the vertical choke. So my build is a little off because yeah, I've been thrown off balance because he didn't fast expand. I'm just, uh, this is the first game of the day and I'm just used to playing uh, against fast expansion. So you can see I actually have to wait for uh, money to put down my spot. So again, um, yeah, I got lucky that I trapped the medics, but again, there's this is pretty much against a good player. Like you can, you're at a, such a disadvantage at this point. I don't know how many drones I saved, but it wasn't all of them. Right? And then I have to cancel this spire um, because he was he would have killed that too. So now you are in the mode where you realize you're behind. Um, not really desperation, but. Play for, yep, playing from behind is different than playing standard. And and playing this far behind is different than when you're just a little behind. When you're a little behind, you can just play standard and you can just focus on your micro and, you know, try hard and you can catch back up. When you're really far behind, you actually have to adapt your play style. I mean, if I was some, uh, if we were playing on Hamachi and I was some crazy uh, Zergling micro, or, or not Zergling, a Mutalist micro, or, I would have put down a spire and just, just relied on my mutas to get back in the game, but because I'm not, and because if you're listening to this, you probably aren't either, what you're going to want to do to recover is just go lurkers, because the by the time you get mutalists out, you're already so far behind, you'll have turrets up all over the place that you're not going to do any good, and you're, you're not going to be able to get a third base up, because your um, harassment will be ineffective, and then in the transition to to lurkers, he'll push out and he'll just get destroyed. Which is, um, which happens more so when you're behind than, than just standard, because you'll have enough zerglings and mutalists in standard that you can stop his original push out, but because you're so far behind here, you, you won't be able to do that. So, just, just bide your time, uh, keep your zerglings to threaten a backstab. If, if he tries to move out before you get lurkers again, you can run in and backstab him. Oh, uh, excuse me. Um, so I'm just getting my Hydralis out because the plan here is just to morph Hydralis where he doesn't expect it and then run into his base pretty much with uh, with lurkers that were morphed outside of his main. And I have a few lurkers, or a few Hydralis I'm going to morph to lurkers just uh, still at my natural to defend any sort of, uh, uh, of attack that he's going to bring. I'm just gonna come in, kill all these minions. Um, I think I t killed that bunker. The point was, um, I was gonna try to kill all his reinforcements and then kill the bunker and get, uh, and and then I could bring the lurkers in and they would be able to do some real damage. But obviously, he um, realized he's ahead. It makes more sense to to bring his army back than than to continue. Uh, try to kind of trading um, armies with me here, so so he's just brought back uh, his army, and I, d I don't think those bunkers are loaded, but I'm not really gonna risk it. I it's mostly fire bats over here, but um, all he has to do is load some marines in their scan, and, and I'm behind at this point. That uh, if you watch the the uh, commentary from before, where I said if you're behind, you don't want to be Trading armies, so that's uh, that's what I'm in right now. I, I I'm just kind of bothering him. I don't want to be trading armies with him at this point. Um, that hatchery at nine should have gone off a long time ago. You see, I had drones ready to go over there, but um, I don't know if I misclicked or it just never went down because I don't have enough minerals. Um, but that that really should have gone down. So what I'm what I'm doing here is just putting a little pressure on him. Um, I'm gonna. Uh, really, kind of. When you're behind, it feels like you never have enough minerals to do anything. So you really have to make a conscious decision of what you're gonna do. So I'm really um, ma making sure I get plus one carapace, and then I'm going straight to hide. And I've kind of cut a few uh, units here to get a spire because I know I'm gonna need scourge to to, uh, to scourge his first vessel to to be able to put up any sort of defense here. And again, just bothering him, bothering his tank, bothering his his barracks. This is kind of thing that uh, can frustrate him and get you a few extra kills. 
Um, and and every time you do that, you're delaying his push a little bit, which gets you closer to getting lurkers and and closer to living and winning the game possibly. So that's a game plan. Um, as my hive gets closer here, I'm going to um, just maximizing my army because I want to time it. I'll be switching over from drones to army because I want to time it so my army is as large as possible when my defilers are coming out. And again, just uh, some preventative scourge down there. Um, it really helps if you play Terran vs. Zerg to, uh, to understand what you need to do in Zerg vs. Terran. Um, I'm not expecting everyone to go out there and learn learn uh, uh, Terran vs. Zerg, but if you just think in your head, like, what would I do if I was Terran? Well, what would I do? I would scan 9. See, he's got nine, and just load up a drop and go there because he's got so few units that he he probably can't defend the front door and um, and nine at the same time. So in dealing with that, I've I've made extra scourge. I've got four there, and they're just split up so that I don't even need to watch them. They just uh, cover where I think he would drop. And if he if he outsmarts me and flies around bottom right and comes around to my natural, then I mean so be it. He outplayed me. But I, I've got so few units here, I can't be scouting everywhere. I've, I've got to really just get lucky and just just defend the, the most obvious attacks here. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, th and you can see, I don't think I ever look at it, but there's a drop ship coming from his natural to 9 o'clock. Here it comes. And the scourge are set up, so I don't even need to look too scourge. Just track onto it and kill it. So again, that's the kind of luck you're going to need if you're going to um, come back from, from a, an early deficit like that. And I'm also lucky that he's so so passive here. He's almost letting me like making a conscious decision to let me back in the game it seems because he should have had vessels out at this point. I suppose he delayed the mortal to get uh, a dropship, but his dropship was late, I think as well. So um yeah, he should have been pushing away even if he he has two scanners, he could have just put a little pressure. He's got siege tanks, he's got siege mode. He should be putting pressure. Um, I don't know if he thinks I'm going to go all in, so he thinks d playing defensively is the, the ultimate counter, but I'm actually doing the exact opposite. I'm, I'm tech rushing, uh, just hoping to get to files, um, and, and that's going to be how I'm going to plan on, on getting back in the game. Uh, typically, don't chase uh, vessels with Scourge. It's, it, it never works out. <laughs> <laughs> Zer we're so stubborn, like, oh, I, this time he'll get it, but you never do. Just pull your script back. I mean, I, I even do it. And, and now, as a result, this vessel is going to stay alive, it's going to radiate my defiler, and, I mean, all this could have been avoided if I just kept those first four scourge alive. So, the plan was to, to let his army come up, trade nine for his natural, because I was going to... Um, use this defiler to push into his natural. And I know I can break his bunkers and his siege tanks with, with just the defiler, but again, I didn't have uh, in-position scourge, so he irradiates it, so now that plan is, is kind of out the window. The only thing I've accomplished is he, he had to run back um, to defend that, but he's still I've, I've still given up 9 at this point. Um, and I've got a bit of an economy rolling now, so I feel like I can get my second evolution chamber. But, um, because at this point, uh, kind of a, a quick win with uh, a, a swarm counter isn't viable anymore. I'm, I have to be thinking towards the late game now again. So as I said, um, preemptively running drones is a smart move, especially when you're behind. Um, ideally, you would go save the expansion, but if you don't have enough units, uh, you gotta... I mean, there's no point in letting them mine them if you know they're just going to die. So that's why I win. Um, but I've got an expansion coming up top uh, right, so those drones can be transferred over there. And, and the only thing I've lost is basically a, a bit of mine time and the cost of the hatcher. So again, get your Scourge in position and on proper hotkeys. My Scourge flies right by his vet. This would have been the end of the game. I could have swarm countered him again. My Scourge flies right by the vessel. Defiler gets scourged, or Defiler gets raided. Can't get it there in time. Um, if your Defiler gets irradiated, throw down random uh, swarms. I mean, you might as well. 
and that way if he comes to attack your army, at least you've got a swarm there. There's no reason not to, I mean, you're not losing anything by throwing them down, so, yeah, that's what I would, uh, suggest. So, Day, uh, wrote an article recently, it's in the featured threads on Team Liquid, uh, about, uh, the marginal advantage, and, um, I guess I'll try to explain it quickly, it's, uh, I can't explain it as well as he did, so you should really go read the article, but it's something I wanted to touch on. Um, what... Uh, and basically how it applies to Starcraft. What a lot of people do is they will win a big battle and then they'll they'll think I'm ahead so I should go attack because I'm ahead. Because well that's just common sense. If, you, if you're winning you should have more units so when you attack you should be able to win the game. Um, and I'll, we can apply this even further. A lot of people kinda think Wow, if I had Guardians now, I would win the game. Unfortunately, they don't take into account the the six, seven minutes it's gonna take for them to get a greater spire or get a hive, greater spire, and guardians, and by the time they actually have guardians out, Terran is pushing out and they die. So what you wanna be thinking is how can I how this this advantage I have at this point, how can I press it even further so that my advantage is compounded? And there's many ways to do it, many different styles. The way I do, um, <laughs> my buddy Eric um, labeled it Jamaican Zerg, which is he called it just laid back. <laughs> so it's typically never expand, or er, sorry, never attacking, defending, and expanding until I know I'm way ahead. That is my 100% standard way of playing. You'll see the complete opposite. You see Zergs every color of the rainbow there. They're overly aggressive, like, uh, I guess Quanro is a good example of that, if you follow the pro scene. He's always attacking, and then there's Zergs who are just kind of passive. Um, Saber used to play a Zerg versus Protoss opening style like that. He would expand and defend with very few units, and then look to take over in the mid game. So, um, I just wanted to mention the, about pressing the advantage and and uh, at maintaining your, your marginal advantage that you shouldn't be thinking about you should never think how can I win now because if you're playing true Starcraft where you actually care if you win you shouldn't care when you win and you shouldn't care how you win so it's it's how can I maximize my chances of winning not how can I win the game as soon as possible and yeah when I play Starcraft a lot of people Give me shit for, uh, like you could have killed him five minutes ago, dude. You should not care, as as long as you are maximizing your your chance to win. That you are playing right. That is how you should be playing the game. So um, I guess I'll. Just, that was just a little tangent there. But something uh, I've been wanting to kind of write up for a while, but uh, Dave did a much better job, and there's never really been a. a a uh, a proper place to put a put a thought like that a proper thread. Okay, so so again, um, the filer play is over. Really, uh, so now I'm gonna, as I said in the last game, start sprinkling in um, sprinkling in altruists. And you can see uh, it's it's his micro really that's letting me get back in the game, which is you just, it's just nothing really I can do about it. It's, it's if he was a better player, I would have probably lost, but uh, just good fortune, he he wasn't really as good enough, or wasn't really um, as strong as he needed to be. Um, and in this game, unlike the other one, and it, it's mostly because I was behind, but I, I even do it when I'm not behind, I can't really say. Occasionally, after getting consumed, I will get played. Um, I guess you want it, you, there, you really want it every game, but I would say if I'm ahead, I don't really get it unless he has tons of vessels because, I mean, you can just run in with ultralists, swarm them, and that, that's good enough. If you're behind, you can get lucky with big plagues that, that change the, the outcome of battles. Um, but really, it's, it's something you should always give some thought to because it's always good to have Zerg's turn. Um, again, I can't really give a, a crystal or a clear-cut rule on where and when to get it, but if you are, if you've been playing Zerger's Terran and you haven't been getting Plague, um, start 
start giving some thought to it because it's especially um, good because if, if uh, Terran sees a stray defiler, they'll attack right at it and and those units will group up and that's when you can plague them and then if you have the energy upgrade as well plague them and then swarm and he's left uh, with uh, basically a useless army now that's, that's plagued and it's gonna even if plague works against Terran even uh, against units that haven't been plagued because medics are gonna be healing them and then uh, healing the plagued units and then all his medics have zero energy so it's like you're fighting an army with no medics basically um, so he didn't really press his advantage in here uh, in that he kept attacking me when he, uh, he it's like uh, I, if I was to get into what he was thinking he's just trying to kill me he didn't really go around hunting expansions and he didn't commit to getting a third uh, third base at them. so what you should do if you hurt a zerg is just there's a difference between turtling and playing like kinda uh, I guess you could call it safe or passive whatever you want to call it uh, and the difference is you want to just go around hunting expansions while you're expanding yourself what you don't want to do is just rushing in and trying to kill him and that's that's what he did here and that's what led me back in the game 